Kevin, welcome along. How's it going? Yeah, going very well, thank you. Um, let me just check. Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Um, the other thing is, we will have some questions for Kevin from the chat at the end of the stream. Um, if you could hold your questions till then, that'd be great. Um, we do prioritise those used with channel point redemptions. And when you do ask questions, please try and be a tiny bit respectful, please. Um, nothing too personal or strange. Um, would be lovely. <laughs> um, so this is a nice early one for you. Um, I know yeah. that you're normally a late night person. Um, so let's good, see whether we can morning. wake you up with some thoughts of food. Um, cool. What is your favorite meal? Oh, anything Italian, I think. Um, right now, probably what's on my mind is um, the spicy rigatoni at, at uh, Carbone. I haven't had that in a while. Oh, is that a local restaurant? No, he, he's got shops in uh, New York. And he just opened in Miami and he's got one in Vegas, but he's all over the place. He's just uh, it's a pal of mine and he makes some incredible pasta. Nice. Nice. I love a good pasta. Are you a tea or coffee person? Coffee. Yeah? Except when I'm when I'm abroad, um, I work with some producers that always have PG tips ready and that's always a nice... <laughs> That's nice, so English. Yeah. <laughs> That's very my end. I, I hear that tea's quite good for your voice. They do all these sort of like uh, mm -hmm. vocal, vocal teas, don't they? Yeah, uh, I always have throat coat with me if I'm That's on the road. The... Um, and coat. then I use a like a steamer thing. It's really nice. Nice, nice. Uh, what's your favorite non-alcoholic drink? Is it coffee? Oh. Um, no, it's probably... Uh, Lately, it's been this, it's, so there's so much sugar in it, but there's di a couple of different flavors. It's a seltzer called Clearly Canadian, oh. and it's it's very sweet, but it's it's really good. It's, I just, I'll drink it in a second. Nice. They come in cute bottles. It's really fun. Oh, that sounds lovely. Um, yeah. What about alcohol? What's your favorite alcoholic drink? Mm, tequila. Yeah. How, tequila. How, are we, how are we drinking our tequila? I would probably take Casamigos Blanco on with a little bit of ice and a lime. That's usually the go-to. Beautiful. That's an unusual one. I thought I genuinely thought you were going to go for the whiskey. I'm really surprised. Whiskey and I have a have a long history, um, <laughs> where uh, I, I was trying to get a job um, as like a it was a glorified bar back position that was leading into like a whiskey som sort of training, mm. and uh, and I took like. I basically had to take the SATs of of whiskey um, in the job interview, and I aced it. And the reason they didn't give me the job was because I hadn't used a um, touch screen cash register before, and because uh, I hadn't worked in the service industry, hmm. uh, I was just I was still in school, just trying to cover rent. And so um, I kind of ended my relationship with whiskey at that point and just switched to tequila. Um, never looked back. That's a simpler drink. Um, yeah. I've been a bartender, and I know what those tests are like. They're uh, they're intense. Yeah. They're intense. I studied so hard for it too, and I'm like, well, you don't know how to use an iPad. <laughs> Imagine, um, yeah. if you made your own cocktail, what would you call it? Oh no. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm very self-deprecating, so it'd probably be, it'd probably be something along the lines of I'd probably like the last one or something or or, or 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 like the end of the night maybe end of the night would be a good one that's a good name for a cocktail yeah what does it taste like um it tastes good it's probably it's probably some derivative of uh like a paloma um this like grapefruit tequila beverage but maybe if it's the end of the night we want something a little like um a little thicker um so maybe i would go back to like some kind of uh whiskey or, or malt at that point i'm not sure but i'm not sure <laughs> Tequila's ended a lot of my nights, so I don't know. The end of yeah. the night's pretty good for tequila. Okay, sounds good. Um, what about um, movies? Uh, are you a movie person? Yeah, I like movies. What's your favorite film? Um, my favorite film, probably just because uh, I got some like cool family memories and stuff with it, is uh, how many times I've watched this. What about Bob? It's a Bill Murray movie oh, yeah. um, where he basically... Um, interrupts his therapist's family vacation and uh drives everyone insane well drives his therapist insane but i also like um a lot of dark humor i like burn after reading mm. um i like in bruges um uh 
Is it Bruce the Matt Damon one? Uh, Colin Farrell. And, oh, um, that's the one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what about actors, actresses? Have you got a favorite actor or actress? Yeah. Uh, probably, um, I was, this is kind of like uh, uh, cliche, I guess. I, I mean, like, I think Daniel Day Lewis is a genius. I don't know if he's doing any more movies over the course of his the rest of his life, but um, Daniel Day Lewis, cool. Philip Seymour Hoffman was really great before mm-hmm. we lost him. And then uh, actresses, um, uh, Frances McDormand mm-hmm. is, uh, I think, really funny. And then, uh, who else? I'm not sure. I, I mean, it, I guess like some some actors or actresses are are so good for for one role, and then and then you don't really hear from them again. And and I love those movies. And then other people you see all over the place. Um, but yeah, I just like good movie. Yeah, um, I know what you mean with the one the one movie thing. Sometimes you see it's nice to see somebody who you don't recognize who then turns out to be perfect for that role. Right. Yeah. Um, what about movie soundtracks? Is there a soundtrack that really stands out to you as something that? Yep. Piece of art. Um, I, I'm going to pronounce the composer's name wrong. Ar- Arvo. Um, last name is starts with a P. They did the "There Will Be Blood" soundtrack. Oh yeah. Um, and it's beautiful. Um, and uh, what else? I think um, I, I I think if it's more like film scorey type stuff like that, um, uh, there's some friends of mine that have been pretty active over the past few years this guy Ludwig Gorenson um he did the um Black Panther uh soundtrack oh, it wow. wasn't the Hendrick Lamar uh sort of song by song um album uh and uh I, I think Ludwig's very talented too and then yeah I, I kind of like the moodier stuff on film score uh so Atticus Ross and um Trent Reznor always do some pretty cool work so the social network um soundtrack was really really nice yeah, that was a really good soundtrack, actually, The Social Network. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, really set the mood. Um, yeah, I think it's quite a different skill writing music for film um, than yeah. just, you know, releasing a track. Um, but, yeah, if you get the mood right, it can be amazing. Um, if there's one movie universe that you could be part of, um, not in the film, necessarily, just, okay. you know, sitting around on a planet in Star Wars or firing yeah. wizardy spells as Harry Potter world, what would you choose? So I think I would, I would, I didn't, okay, this is, people might hate me for this. I didn't watch, um, I, I haven't gotten too deep in like franchise, like movie franchises outside of maybe like seeing a bunch of the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would probably, I, I, so I didn't get, I didn't get super into Harry Potter, That's but, fine. um, just the, 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 um, the, the, I saw the first movie, and it seemed it seemed like those kids back then were having so much fun in this like made up world. I'd love to be kind of like the Neville Longbottom sort of uh, derivative, um, who's uh, who's just slightly more afraid uh, than Neville is of everything. Um, because I definitely couldn't be Harry Potter, but um, it'd be cool to be his friend. Yeah, I think just being yeah. in the world, just being able to play around with the magic wand, <laughs> I'm fully yeah. behind that. Um, right. You play a lot of video games, right? I do. Yeah. Um, is there a childhood game that you remember fondly? Okay. Or a few. Um, so, when when I was when I was really young, I I started playing violin when I was like uh, four, and my first recital, uh, my dad got me uh, a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Red, and. That was that was kind of the uh, beginning of everything for me, um, and I was a hardcore red stan, just because I didn't play yellow or blue. Um, but then when I saw that in yellow you can have Pikachu following you around, uh, I kind of switched over, I'm and I played through the, the Pokemon <laughs> franchise. I played through the Pokemon franchise all the way through. I want to say um, maybe like Ruby, yeah. um, and uh, and then I got into. Um, I, I I got into some other stuff that, that was was like less gaming specific. So um, I, I had a Dreamcast and and played um, played a few played a few games there, but it was mostly like sports games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started really getting into shooters and um, uh, more like um, 
like uh, sandboxy stuff um, when I realized that my friends didn't want to hang out with me in real life. Um, so I switched over to, I changed consoles and, uh, and started hanging out with everybody on Xbox Live. And, um, and we got into a lot of Battle Royale games and some TDMs. And um, it's proven to be a really nice outlet um, from everything else going on in, in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's a good stress reliever, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, playing Warzone, it doesn't really. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I mean, it can be stressful, but it's still yeah. it's still an escape, right? It's still it's a different another, place. another type of stress. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, shout out for the Dreamcast, though. I think, you know, you were one of the 300 people that owned one, very yep. briefly, <laughs> while they released eight games. Uh, I had one. DMC I think we played now. Virtua Soccer, and that was about it. I think that's the only game I ever had. <laughs> yeah, what, I think I, I played, I must have played... Uh, was, was Tony Hawk on Dreamcast? I don't know. That was no, a good was game, PS2. though. That was, was a good PS2. game. Because I, I, I had, on Dreamcast, there was some, like, robot game that I don't I don't even remember what it was called. And then, uh, like, Ready to Rumble Boxing was really fun. Yeah. yeah. I, love the, I love the fighting games. Um, what do you, what's your favorite game that you're playing right now? Or playing on stream, off stream? Um, what's got you right well, now? Well... I had a lot of fun the other night I was streaming. I played on the new Among Us map, uh, and I just like party games. So that game kind of uh, is a nice hybrid of, like, you can just, like, casually have a good time with your friends and also, like, be competitive. And I like, uh, like um, whereas, like, Jackbox is just constantly goofing off or, like, Warzone, you're, like, locked in. Mm. Um, Among Us, you can, like, do some sweaty stuff and, and still, like, joke around with your friends. Um so the airship the map's too big but it was it was really fun um and then other games that i've been getting into lately are more of like the crafting type games like valheim and um uh uh rust we had kind of a boom that it went up and down a, like a couple months ago and and um those games take me a long time to really get into but um it's kind of a nice step aside from constant action like in warzone or apex yeah. um when you started streaming am i right in thinking you started with minecraft yeah that was the first time i'd ever played minecraft um and i liked it a lot but uh the community that i was playing with all, all kind of stopped uh getting into the server um and at the same time i started streaming more like music stuff and and um i uh, my first computer i couldn't really play any games uh, on stream anyway i had to play minecraft at 30 fps yeah uh so <laughs> the hamsters the hamsters were real exactly um, yeah yeah and I, I mean i suppose you get a little bit more interest for music than you do for minecraft but i just thought it was yeah. a lovely little thing to see because obviously the first thing i did when i discovered your stream was to then go back and watch the earlier stuff and uh I was going, what, what, th this is a this is a step <laughs> you know? yep, yep. it's a real step yeah. um we better talk about some music um I know this is not a question you can answer in one word, but uh, favorite artist, artists, um, who comes to mind? Um, uh, I'm, I'm really an old soul when it comes to the music that I like to listen to. So I'm really into a lot of jazz music. I like Ahmad Jamal and Oscar Peterson and uh, John Coltrane, Bill Evans. Um, some big influences for me are uh, Sam Cooke, um, Joni Mitchell, uh, Stevie Wonder, um, uh, and uh, and some I think contemporaries of mine um, that I really admire are um, Frank Ocean, um, uh, James Blake's very talented, uh, Bonnie Bear, um, and I also like a lot of kind of alternative sort of progressive hip hop. Uh, this guy Saba is incredible. He's putting new music out as we speak, and uh, Smino and some other kind of extensions of this um, collective that is called Selection. Um, they, I think they might have started in the UK. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of producers that, that are just doing stuff that's so off the wall. Um, you kind of, uh, it, it, it's almost like they create this different world of, of music that, that kind of reminds you that that still exists, like good music still exists in the industry. Mm, there's a lot of sort of re-emerging um, older genres going on, aren't there? Um, yeah. You know, we're hearing callbacks to sort of more classically written music, if you like. Um, not classical, but just classically written stuff that uh, maybe we missed for a while with the advance of electronics. Yeah, I think um, 
the 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 first when when like anybody could get a laptop and and become a producer um the it, that that sort of problem still exists um because so many wait like way too often even even for me like you can get into a session and there's somebody that doesn't know chord structure or, or just any sense of theory but has really great drum sounds and then they get the gig and kind of lean on whoever they're calling to you know make the song itself um but every once in a while you see um producers who are uh truly gifted musicians in the first place and and uh they can play through everything and and as a songwriter that makes my job a lot easier because all i got to do is focus on the melody and the lyrics if we're in a session um but yeah i think I, i'm you know without naming too many names there's people like monty booker and um uh this guy um this this guy uh who i work with a lot um named brad cook who can kind of play a whole bunch of things bj burton is another another guy that, that's really great they they look at music from a much more um organic perspective than uh than sort of like the dollar signs at the end of the of the at the finish line yeah i think that's you know it's, it's becoming more important now um than it was perhaps 10 15 years ago when it was sort of you know you had the typical especially sort of late 90s early 2000s where sort of pop songs were coming out flying left yeah. right and center and sort of the real essence of music got really left out um is there a genre of music you really don't get on with is there anything that you just think oh, it's just not for me um i think uh it's less about um, my like um, lack of interest in something, and more of just my lack of um, experience with it. Uh, so there's there's certain genres that um, that I just haven't listened to enough of yet to to kind of really um, get a good understanding of the styles and and the and the sort of space that they occupy. My some a catchphrase that I that I always try and live by is um, you have to find the hook in everything. So all of it to say, like, there's definitely songs that I don't like at all. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's definitely artists I don't like at all. It's definitely, but it's, it's not specific to a style or a genre. Mm. Um, it's always based on, like, the quality of the songwriting. Because I think there's, there's a really, it, songwriting's hard. And, and I think a lot of people get away with watered down product because of the way that we listen to music and our attention span and everything. And so I'm just always listening to everything to see where the uh what like what is what is making this catchy that isn't like a bunch of money going into the marketing behind it mm. like what what musically is making this react the way it is yeah i think uh it, it's a strange look at it sometimes when i mean you're right with the marketing thing and it's not always the in purposeful marketing sometimes it's the controversy behind a song or you know the music yeah. video or something someone rather said or you know i mean recently i was just uh watching a video actually not that long ago about the new song driver's license i mean i know it's not new now but it was when it came out and it was this huge you know craze um and it's a good song but it mm -hmm. sort of apparently she took off a lot more than she would have done because taylor swift mentioned her in a tweet like is yeah. it, that that's marketing these days you know it's it's crazy and then you know it went absolutely wild so i guess it's not always i mean i suppose if it's not a good song it doesn't sell as well um Yes, I, I yeah, I, I would say this the songs in that sort of you know top tier of major what I like to I, sometimes I jokingly refer to it as corporate music. Yep. Um, but uh, but the you know the the amount of the amount of money that goes into major label acts by comparison to independent artists and and even signed acts that are just lower on the roster or on the totem pole is uh, is kind of night and day yeah. um and and the the interesting thing about labels is that um some of them will will try everything they'll throw everything at the wall and, and if it doesn't stick they don't really care because they make their um investment back in the artist that constantly at the top of the list that constantly will return mm. so um you know you can throw you can throw 10 olivia rodrigo's at the wall and if just the one Olivia Rodrigo uh, sticks and even does half of what Driver's License did, it's all a win at the yeah. end of the day for, for a label. Which is scary for artists. Um, it is. 
and and you know i think labels are um you know in 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 most cases especially now because of the way that um they're sort of buying up the independent real estate um you you can see that labels are still kind of essential for um whatever kind of uh you know collaborative entrepreneurial partnership you're you're interested in for scaling your business um but um from a purist like a purely artistic point of view um they don't really uh they don't really benefit the, the craft um as as much as as much as they could yeah i think um they're from uh, not oh not everyone but obviously most uh record companies are looking at you know they've got to be successful before they before they look at whether they've got to produce good music they look at they've got to be financially viable right so yeah it's yeah. uh it's a horrible thing to have to have but at the same time you kind of you know otherwise a lot of music wouldn't get seen or heard at all so it, it goes both ways i guess um, yeah i, I yeah i think that the at, at the end of the day like it's called the music industry or it's called the music business so if if my if my goal as a as a artist in the music business was was just to constantly make something that um that was the was the the most like uh, how do how am i say, how do i say this if i if i didn't care at all about um the the dollar sign then mm. i wouldn't be able to keep making the art just in the way that the business is structured and so it's the same thing with labels they just have a lot more resources that they're playing with yeah no, i think that's fair um what's the your favorite gig that you've ever been to or concert that you've ever been to as a listener um i saw fleet foxes play on the helplessness blues tour in what what that must have been 2012 they sounded exactly like the record um i also saw bonnie Ver at um what was that uh hammersmith apollo mm -hmm. um and uh that was an incredible show um i saw frank ocean at a festival in um uh los angeles and also in new york um and uh in the la in the la festival he brought out um brad pitt for like a spike jones produced live video thing and it was it was um a real flex for frank ocean <laughs> that's a um, that's a pretty big name to yeah. pull out on, st on stage but um yeah those kind of shows there's there's a lot of people that they, they catch fire in the in in the game if you will and you go to their concert and there's a lot of hype behind them mm. i think the shows that really stick out are the ones that that have some of that hype but but really like like bonnie Vare had had been it kind of, it went by the time I saw that residency that, that he was doing it at the uh, at the Hammersmith venue, um, or maybe it's a Ventum Apollo. I, f I forget what it's what, what the venue name is called, but the the you know the Grammy speech from years ago and everything. It was just kind of like his audience. He doesn't need hype, no, um, because the music speaks for itself. I've been to plenty of shows where um, all the all the people from labels and PR and and whatever outlets are there to like watch um 10 seconds of the gig so they can put it on their instagram story and then they just talk about what else they're doing for work that week yeah. and uh i think the reason that the shows that i mentioned were more impactful to me was because that you didn't see that in the crowd everyone was there to like people didn't really even have their phones out no. um other than the frank ocean festival because it's festivals are different but um you know what i mean like yeah people are there to I hear like the music shows where you're there yeah yeah um i think it's always telling for me how many people are not at the very front pushing to be there and seen and whatever, and how many people are just sitting there in their own place, you know, or standing right. there. You know, I mean, I personally, this is awful, but I, I prefer seated concerts. Like, when you can, yeah. I prefer to sit down so that I can just be... I mean, obviously, it depends on the music you're going to. If you're going to a Foo Fighters concert, you know, you want to be out the front and bouncing right. around. But in majority of things, I prefer seated concerts because it's less of this sort of phone up in the air, we were here, we were at the front, blah, 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 and more of the experience you know you're there to experience the music and i think with yeah. something like bonnie there you know you don't want any distraction you just want to be there yeah it's definitely there there's like you said with foo fighters and stuff i think there's a there's a handful of artists that can that can do both that can do the seated theater and that can that can do like the, the arena like mm -hmm. i think john mayer is a, is a good example yeah. of someone that can do both 
Um, but then Ray LaMontagne, for instance, is perfect for a seated theater. I wouldn't want to see Ray LaMontagne at anything bigger than like the Beacon or, uh, or, um, I mean, you know, like a three yeah. or 4,000 cap theater right. that, where you're sat. And cause it's, it's a movie. It's like, it, you know, mm -hmm. he'll take you on a, he'll take you on a very like, um, structured journey. Um, whereas like Foo Fighters are going to throw you off the wall for yeah. two or three hours. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's you're right. It's a completely different thing that you're going to, isn't it? One's a journey and one's a sort of... It's a fun house, really. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite lyrics from a song? Oh. Um, well, uh, one song that I always kind of go back to if I'm really taking a, taking notes on, on lyric writing is A Case of You by Joni Mitchell. Um, and the, the verse on the back of a cartoon coaster... Beneath the blue TV screen light, I drew a map of Canada, uh, and your face sketched on it twice. And uh, there's there's writers like F. Scott Fitzgerald and, and so forth that will take hundreds of pages just to describe one thing. Um, and in songwriting, you don't have that kind of time. So, and I mean, unless you're doing some magnum opus, uh, like 15-minute yeah. long marathon. So for Joni Mitchell to basically... I, I'm in that bar um, when 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 she when she's singing those those words and there's plenty of songs that try to do that that can't get you there mm. um, and so um, uh, stuff that gets stuff stuff that is so subtly specific like that with just a few descriptors that, that can put you exactly in that zone um, is really hard to find but but um, like it's it's like a it's a it's it's like a museum piece in terms of of lyricism. And then um, other other like things that I pay attention to in lyrics um, are just like stuff that I would see like on a T-shirt or stuff that I would see on a poster, like one-liners that uh, like for instance Bob Dylan, "Don't think twice, it's all right." Like that says so much in such in so little time, and um, I think my my go-to is always like less is more. Um, and and restraint, and so um, I'm really gravitated towards uh, towards those kind of lyrics. Yeah, um, that that Johnny Mitchell song is one of my favorite songs of all time. So, yeah, um, beautiful track. Um, I don't mean this in a sort of you know who who did you like most, um, but in terms of pure musical revelation, who's your favorite artist that you've worked with? Um, who really blew your mind? Oh. Um. From like a, uh, from like just a knowledge of music perspective, I think Ruben James or Bruno Major um, are are two two friends of mine who just know their instruments like the back of their hand and can and can get from A to Z faster than anybody. Um, uh, some other people have worked with uh, that. Um, I mean. Kind of indirectly uh on the lemonade project uh there were there there were a few of us that were um you know kind of pseudo collaborating that that it was just fun it was fun to watch people kind of operate in their in their own worlds um and uh who else actually if i could just uh, can i just hold you there for a second when you talk about okay. collaborating with these people is that so I, I always got in my head this image of sort of you make your own little thing in your own little studio and then you send it over to this person and they do their own little thing in their own studio. Is this more of a kind of come together all in the same room, just vibing off of each other then? Um, uh, so, so sometimes sometimes you're in the room with, with, the, with the artists or producers and, and other times it's um, it, it, you're kind of like tossing stuff back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and those those... The, the latter of those types of experiences are also uh, equally inspiring because if I get if I get like updated stems or audio from so and so and I'm putting that into the session we're working on, you can kind of just get a sense of like where their head's at just upon a first listen. But what I really like to do is um, kind of sit back and and watch watch people play. So um, there was a song of mine. Uh, that I was writing on the hoax album called Warn. And I wrote that with a producer named Frank Dukes. And he um, had kind of a, not really an assistant, but a collaborator that he was sort of um, 
fostering into the music business named Khan, who is this hyper gifted, like just probably maybe on the spectrum, like type of gifted, like, like music savant and, um, just played through, um, the kind of changes on the song worn that, um, it just it's the simplest inversion on like a on like a five chord uh with one note that's like wrong mm -hmm. and it makes and it makes it so so much better yeah. um and he found every little moment um through the through the changes that we had, we had kind of mapped out and just it it took it to the next level um and um i know that he's done a lot more stuff with uh this artist from canada named mustafa uh the poet who's a very talented um yeah, who else? I mean, there's some beat makers that, that um, it's just fun to watch their process. This guy, mm -hmm. D-Pat, who's part of the group Sonder. Um, we did some work together um, years ago. And uh, some of these some of these people who I've worked with, like the music that we wrote, like hasn't come out or, or won't come out. Um, and other artists that, that uh, we've done some stuff with, uh, like, uh, for instance, I worked on a song with Banks um, and... Uh, BJ uh, Burton and I actually um, worked on that song together um, with with Jillian, um, and that we were we all weren't in the same room for that, but you can you you can kind of see the points. I mean, if you're if you're in the if you're in the song from front to back, like on the creative side, you can kind of see the point where um, you kind of hand the baton off, if you will, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 just like let the let the next sort of phase like augment the, the piece yeah, it must be a wonderful thing um sort of sending something and then receiving something back that goes in the direction you were imagining um yeah or, the real or magical even part is when, the real you, magical part is when you you work with you work with people who you haven't worked with before and you're on the same page like right off mm -hmm. the bat because music is inherently its own language right um fairly universal i would say and um you know, I I can get I can get in a room with with somebody else, a writing session or a production uh, day or whatever, and um, we don't have to say a word to each other. Sometimes, and mm -hmm. and the, and the thing can get made, and that that's always really fun to be a part of. It feels really um, it's like magic trick. Yeah, it is. That that's must be an amazing feeling, you know, um, just two people walking alongside, knowing exactly where the next one's going to turn. Without communication, is always. You know, an incredible experience, regardless of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but with yeah. music, you get this wonderful product at the end as well. So there must be a, right, exactly. a good side to it. Yeah. Um, do you drive? Uh, like a car? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just because I'm about to ask a question, I suddenly realised, you know, uh, maybe it's uh, yeah. Anyway, um, if you're driving, middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, let's say, and you're going through a tunnel, you're doing slightly over the speed limit, probably, you yeah. know. Um, mm -hmm. flying down, bit of hype. Um, what's on the radio? Uh, no Church in the Wild. Um, Jay, Kanye, Frank Ocean. Um, if I'm like really sad, um, mm, I'll probably play, uh, I don't know. If I'm lately, if I'm, if I'm sad and I'm driving, I'm usually listening to like new demos. Um, so <laughs> Uh, that's that's been that's been a lot of the drives, but um, I listen to um, Big Thief. It's one of my it's my favorite band, um, yeah. and uh, a lot of um, uh, Slum Village, like uh, kind of earlier earlier hip hop. Uh, it's like um, Jay Dilla and Big L and um, the stuff that kind of like you were constantly catching the beat, and they were they were either ahead or way behind you. You could never tell. Mm. Um, but really, truthfully, they were just way ahead of their game. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I like I like listening to a lot of hip hop when I drive. So back to Saba and Kendrick, and um, I, I like some Joy Badass. I'm kind of all over the place with that. I love a bit of Kendrick Lamar when you sort of yeah. you know late night. Just I, I when I asked the lyrics question, I was actually thinking of Kendrick Lamar because. That's one where I always I catch a line that, you know, even if I've heard the song 10 times, the, the 10th time you hear a line and you think, oh, that's where that was going. Or, you know, or it takes on a different meaning for you when you hear it at a different time. Or, And I think that for me, is, he's really blows my mind lyrically a lot of the time. 
something that I've noticed about myself um, when I'm thinking of lyrics is I compartmentalize hip hop and rap because I, I listen to it differently uh, because it is it's so um, dependent on good wordplay and and like really thoughtful um, really 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 thoughtful like sentiments throughout the entire you can't take a break really in in hip hop if you mm. if you're a good rapper there's a lot of hip hop artists that fill space with words that don't really mean anything they brag too much or, or whatever yeah but like certain artists like Kendrick and J Cole um, amidst all of his uh, confidence in the way he raps uh, it, they, the, these these two are like top of the game for a long time and and will be for a while I think because um, I don't think anyone's catching them uh, but um, if I can if I can if I can listen to uh, a song um, specifically in hip hop from front to back and just constantly be learning something mm. um, it's like it's really magical Kendrick definitely pulls that off I mean uh, to pimp a butterfly is is his Mona Lisa um, and the spoken word moments like the sort of like skits in between the songs it just does it so like so seamlessly and then he has characters like there's okay. there's the song where he's like drunk and, and he takes breaks to like sip on a bottle uh, those moments like I mean for me as a listener like those things stick with me yeah it's a, I mean the whole thing's a masterpiece I think um, yeah my my sort of I had an earlier experience with that with the uh, I'm not a big fan of Kanye West anymore, but his original college dropout for me was the first yeah. time I'd heard those skits really sort of he took you on a story throughout the whole you know throughout the whole album right um, and that's yeah I, I guess you're right in that rap is a, a different ball game really when it comes to lyrics um, but for you when it comes to more non rap music um, what's more important to you the lyrics or the way the song is written um. Uh, do you mean like yeah, the uh, music -y bit? Yeah, the the melody music and stuff. I think um, you can look at it two different ways. From a from like a business mindset, like I don't think, truthfully, that um, uh, you would care as much about the lyrics as you do about a catchy melody, um, because far too often, if I hear a song on the radio that it piques my interest like i'm i'm just humming the melody after i listen to it i don't know the words um if i'm listening intently to a song i i um pay attention a lot harder to the lyrics um so it's, it's just i think the the type of way you're listening and you're consuming the, the music um but for me the way i write it's usually melody and lyrics kind of happening at the same time mm -hmm. uh and so I'm not really separating the two as much. And then my hands, I've tried very hard to be able to separate my brain from my hands so I can um, play the piano or, or uh, play the guitar without having to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I can put more energy into the words because I am trying to do it kind of all at the same time. And then when my brain is like, you need to chill out, then I kind of like grab the pen again and, and write down my thoughts. But it's all, I mean... I, I I put a lot of emphasis into into the lyrics for me, so mm. I guess I would lean more towards that, and then the melodies kind of like follow follow along, but it's usually all kind of happening at the same time. Yeah, with that process, when you're writing both music and lyrics simultaneously, does that mean that songs, when when they come, come a lot quicker, and you spend more time with sort of not nothing happening, and then suddenly you know you're writing a song in twenty eight minutes, yeah. um, as opposed to a sort think... of more structured constructing. I mean, it some sometimes some sometimes it happens really quick. Um, I the the one thing that I that I don't like doing is like um, is leaving leaving the song sit unfinished for too long. I I really like to to get it all done in one swing, um, because then one if you come back to it like there's definitely there's definitely some benefit to kind of like reassessing the context and then coming back and and trying to revisit it, but. For me, in my experience, like I kind of, if my perspective on the on the content of the song changes too much, then it starts to feel disjointed in the sections where I come back to it, uh, and so that makes it a bit harder. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, every once in a while, it's like Christmas, and and you you're writing a song in in ten minutes, and and you're done, and it's like, well, this is the best thing I've done mm. ever. Uh, but then other times, you know, it can be 
there's some sessions we've been doing a lot of remote writing sessions on zoom and and uh facetime and uh it's so awkward because if you're in a studio with the collaborators like you can step out you can go for a walk you can order food you can do whatever but if you're on facetime it's just kind of like <laughs> you're stuck on you yeah yeah run out of ideas um but yeah it's it's i mean there's there's no rhyme or reason to to the um to the process really in terms of how long it takes to get something done i at the same time like there's there's really no need to force anything or phone anything in just for the sake of getting it done hmm. so while i i like to try and, and get it done in, in one sitting um if if it if you are banging your head against a wall like you're going to do yourself more harm trying to finish something than of course and uh you know what i mean yeah you don't you never want to just put something out for the sake of putting something out right. do you that's uh it's not quite how it works in the music um something different um desert island uh you're stranded on a desert island Okay. Um, you can't get rescued. Um, you can't produce any more of anything. You can't gain anything. You can't communicate. Um, but you can take a few things with you. Um, yeah. Starting off with one possession, one material, physical possession. Yeah. Probably not electronic. What would, be, what would you take? It's got to be an acoustic guitar. Yeah. I think if, if if I can if if we can if we can just say that that's a given, then maybe I can give a more creative answer. <laughs> no, no, I, I think that's you know it's fair. It's it's probably. Is there a specific guitar are you uh, that you're particularly attached um, to? The two guitars that I've been playing a lot on stream are uh, my Taylor and my D'Angelico. Um, if I had my like pick of the litter, I would I would love to go after like an old Gibson or uh, or like a Martin. But um, this Taylor's is it was. I kind of stole it from my dad and it's been with me for over a decade. Um, and I wrote some of my favorite songs that I've ever put out on it. So, um, probably, probably the Taylor. It's got a place in your heart. Do you, do you have a name for your guitar? I don't have names for these two, but, um, on tour, um, especially if we pass through Chicago, um, there's a guitar shop where I'm, I'll try and get a new guitar every, every time. And it's not new, but like there, it's like a vintage shop. And um, I, I named those, I started naming them because the first guitar I bought on tour was a Harmony Rocket. Um, and my favorite types of electric guitars are the old ones that you could buy at like the general store that were like sold in kits basically. Um, and they were cheap and they weren't, you know, Gibson Fender, um, Guild. They were like Dan Electro, uh, Harmony, uh, Silvertone. And now they're coveted. And so uh, I remember I was looking in the like, F hole of the guitars, semi hollow, and it said Ava. Uh, mm. Some somebody wrote with thick marker Ava on the inside. I don't know if it was a mistake, but so uh, I named that guitar Ava, and um, and then started coming up with names for every guitar I bought after that. That's a lovely thing. Um, so on your desk, she doesn't she, she doesn't uh, she doesn't go on the road with me anymore because I went to Dublin. Uh, with that guitar and um uh air lingus um trashed it like so i had to get i i had to um they like busted the jack oh, lead so so i had to hit, get that fixed so now she's just she's safe she's <laughs> in a precious place yeah um one music album this is a sort of you can stick it to your ear and hear it um just one album stuck on your desert island mm. uh it's gonna be a jazz record um it would either be uh, exclusively for my friends, which is an Oscar Peterson uh, album, or it would be, um, but not for me, live at the Pershing Ahmad Jamal. Wow. Why, why jazz? I think um, sometimes for, for me, like if, uh, well, obviously as like a singer, if I'm stuck on a desert island, especially, but sometimes if I just, if I, if I need some new inspiration or old inspiration or, or just like change the pace up, not having to hear a voice, um, gives, gives me the opportunity to poke my head in every once in a while. If, if something new that on the record that I haven't really picked up on before, uh, like gets me excited. Um, but also just, um, I don't know, from a, from a listening perspective, I can get a lot more done meditatively, um, when I'm not paying attention to words. Mm. Um, and you can you can kind of like create your own sort of dialogue in instrumental music, and uh, jazz is just something that I've been in love with 
probably because I can't do it very well. That's kind of how my... <laughs> it's a thing know, of its own, I'm, isn't it? You love what you can't have, right? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> um, one book. You can take one book with you. What would you take? Um... Well, I guess it's kind of dense, but um, Sartre had a book called On Being and Nothingness um, that uh, I never got through, but I read big chunks of, and that was always very helpful. Um, there's another there's another book that I got at like an airport. Um, it was called like uh, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Um, <laughs> Beautiful title. Which, which is pretty good. Um, and then uh, I read a book about a year ago called uh, it's it called A Primer on Forgetting. Um, and and that was that was really nice. Okay. I don't I don't have a specific book. Let me think. That's Probably very that's very book. cerebral yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's not yeah. a novel. You're not a you're right. not a novel reader. Or uh, I, I don't have the attention span um, for it. Uh, like I don't know if, if this is common, but when I read, like, my eyes will be interpreting the words on the page, but my brain will be somewhere else. And then I'm like, fifty pages in, and I'm like, what has happened? Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely. So I like. I like shorter stories or, or stuff that, that is right off the bat trying to make you think or like memoirs um, that feel more like a conversation. Yeah, well, I think that's that makes a lot of sense. Um, one person that you can take with you, who would you take? Oh. Well, I guess if, if we don't really have um, a means to be creative, I, I'd probably shy away from bringing any of my producer friends with me. Um, person, um, or is the next question going to be like, can I, uh, what animal would you bring or? Yeah, we can bring an animal. We we can give you an animal okay. um, as a separate. So, okay. So if we're doing the animal, it's my dog, Dave. Um, but, uh, person, let's see. I don't know. I, I have kind of, um, so many interesting friendships that have come and gone or, or stayed um through through my life um that's a that's a that's a really interesting question my my impulse would just be like my dad yeah because he's a superhero to me but um that's a good answer some people have said yeah, angelina jolie yes. bear grills uh, oh, somebody took Dwayne, somebody took dwayne johnson with him <laughs> wait a second bear grills is a great yeah. idea because we can get off the island well yeah. maybe you know i mean i don't actually yeah. know how he is without a camera um but the logic oh, behind angelina true. jolie was that people had looked for her uh, <laughs> oh yeah right, that's a good one. so yeah but um no i think that's yeah i think it's much uh it says a lot that uh your, your dad's your superhero i think that's wonderful um yeah. so here you are on your desert island um you've got your oscar peterson you've got your guitar um you, you've got your book on the art of not giving a fuck um mm -hmm. you've got your dog dave and you've got your dad what do you miss the most oh um <laughs> i don't know if there's anything specific i mean everything else um my, is it food uh, friends food? you know yeah that certainly i th i think like um Something that I, I've become more aware of as, as I've gotten older is um, the um, importance of the experience versus the uh, the tangible sort of side of things. Um, and so I, my, my brain, as you're asking that question, is, is thinking more of like um, specific memories or like or, or things I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing other friends or, or like or yeah, like you said, food, like like the, the whole experience around. Um, going to your friend's restaurant and and that and and so forth. Um, I think I would miss concerts a whole lot, but mm. we've all kind of forgotten about them. Recently. They do exist. So, yeah. um, I think it says a lot about you as a person actually that what you'd miss is life. You know. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely you know shows that you're probably living life in the right way if it's all about the experience at the time. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think that's a good thing to to say. Um, let's lighten up the the mood slightly. These are quick okay. questions, one or the other, this or that, night yeah. or day. Night. Now, walk or drive? Drive. Silence or noise? Silence. Beach holiday or a city break? Oh, city break. The forest or the mountains? The... Mm. Mm. I, I put them in the same... I forest, the forest. The forest. The woods. Facebook or Twitter? Uh, Twitter. 
Dinner with friends or going out to a party? Dinner with friends. Bath or shower? Shower. Outside of COVID, online shop or visit the store? Oh, visit the store. Pen or pencil? Pen, not afraid of commitment. <laughs> Beer or wine? Uh, wine. And while you're sleeping, is the window open or closed? Um, the blind might be up, but the window's closed. Yeah, good, good. Um, let's talk about you as a streamer. What made you hit the go live button? What provoked that um, decision? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think um, right off the bat, I had when when COVID kind of locked us all down, I lost a year's worth of, of touring. There really wasn't a way for me to kind of express myself um, for my job. That that's my that's my livelihood is getting on stage and and going around and trying to um, sing for the people. Um, and that also kind of um, in turn kind of set back release schedules and and things just because. Um, everything's just kind of stopped moving and you know uh, we were talking about earlier kind of like the prioritization of certain artists in the music industry versus uh some other people uh, in the music industry that might not have access to the sort of mainstream resources and you got to get creative and, and think of ways to continue to put out content and so um i've been a fan of of certain streamers on twitch um more on the gaming side um, I wasn't really too deep into the music community at the time. Um, and I had done a couple live stream shows and a couple Instagram lives. Um, but the, when, when I was in control of the, of the live stream, um, the fidelity was always pretty rough because you're just singing through your phone. Mm. Um, and so I was interested in, um, kind of seeing if I could do that on, in, in my studio, um, kind of like, um, more like sessions and, and like performance uh, through uh, live streaming, whether it was on Twitch or another platform. But we're on Twitch, love Twitch. Um, and uh, I just kind of, I just kind of um, was talking to my manager and and um, seeing kind of the outlook of when touring was coming back. And this was end of 2020, hmm. and it was still doom and gloom. It was uh, it was like 2022 is probably when yeah. things are probably going back to normal um and i know that there's some things happening this year now that that have me excited again um not for me specifically but just to see dates get announced is nice mm. um but yeah in january i i got my first little pc set up and uh i already had kind of the mic and, and the interface and everything for it um and so i got a camera and um started kind of messing around uh it kind of um brings me back to sort of how I started performing, which was long cover sets at restaurants. Um, and so I, I wanted to kind of get creative with it and um, and kind of use the audience that I've sort of um, attracted over the years um, uh, that know, know me for my songs, know me for the songs I've written for others and kind of mix those songs into um, songs that sort of a broader audience uh, can relate to or recognize and then sort of trick them into listening to the original stuff if you're a new viewer and you and you yeah. uh, and you come into the to the chat it works um, thanks <laughs> <laughs> let you know it does work that's cool um so yeah i mean i and i already like i said i already loved gaming so much and, and gaming has proven to be um such a nice outlet from all the stress of real life um and i think like the community on on twitch music but beyond just the music community um really kind of amplifies that that sentiment um in in providing everyone now that there's always a lot of weirdos that, that kind of hop in and out that that say some funny stuff um or or are there like um make fun of you or whatever but um i've been, I've, I've been made fun of a whole lot so it doesn't really bother me yeah it's and like so, reading the comments on your youtube video isn't it yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so gotta take it all with a bit of pinch of salt i think some people just say those stuff just to get some you know some personal attention I think right, it's often yeah. not a real thought. Um, it's obviously taken off quite quickly, the streaming. Um, did mm. you expect it to move that fast? Um, did you sort of know you I, were coming in with a group of, you know, people behind you? Yeah, I, th I think um, that I've, I've been very lucky to have um, listeners and, 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 and some fans who 
have are been very devoted to my music and and would probably follow me anywhere I go. Um, and uh, this this is no exception. Um, with the the pathing for affiliate and partner, um, I was I, I was I was dead set on getting to affiliate. Um, I, so I went I think seven days in a row or something and mm -hmm. and uh, went pretty hard. And I don't even think I sang any music. I think I was just trying to do it uh, without that. And um, when we got that, and I started kind of thinking a bit more about um, what kind of content I wanted to have on the stream specifically, not necessarily what I would sort of move over to the YouTube channel or um, other social media or how this would connect to live music when it comes back. Um, uh, then, then I, it was it was after that sort of first week that um, that I started to think a bit more about like how to make this um, an extension of of my job um, without making it feel like a job uh, because for the time being I don't have any live shows hmm. and um, I don't always want to sing when I'm streaming um, and the past couple streams that's been nice that I've been able to play games and stuff but I do know that that's what people know me for and everything and and it's been a nice a really a really incredibly warm welcome um from the twitch music community uh specifically um for all the raids that i've gotten so far and and uh and and the kind of really organic feeling of, of growth on the channel because i haven't really outside of twitter i haven't really talked about twitch too much on my social media mm. um because i kind of want to i, I want to keep it um to the to the collective of people who uh who um have have kind of been tuning in since since the beginning uh and and who can kind of keep up and pay attention on on sort of the the inner circle if you will um and i also want to connect more with with other music streamers and other streamers in general um to kind of build the community organically mm. um because yeah, you're building it from that core aren't you yeah yeah, it's, yeah. i mean no doubt that that i that i had a, a bit of a head start um with uh with kind of the audience that i have um but it's still i'm, I'm still trying to make it feel as organic as possible I, I think it's done i think i'm doing a pretty good job with that yeah definitely i agree no i think um you know you say you had a head start but in some ways everybody has their own head start it all depends on you know what you bring to it and you've earned your head start you know these are people who are fans of what you do yeah um, yeah so are you better at video gaming than you are at singing music one hundred percent no. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. Um, yeah. What makes you a good streamer? Why should people come to your channel? It's your chance well, to be. I'm, I don't know if I'm any good, but not uh, modest. <laughs> but I, I do. Um, I do think that um, my I, so, something that, that some people have, have often um, reminded me of is is it uh, I, I have a, a fairly decent sense of humor. It's mostly because it's my defense mechanism, um, and so. Uh, Tying that into um, me singing songs kind of gives you a different look at like what I might be saying in the music, and then if I'm not even singing, um, and you're just getting that sort of other side of me, um, I think uh, as I start to keep find finding my my footing um, in front of the camera and everything uh, with whatever I'm doing, um, it'll start to uh, kind of really nail itself down with with really the like the the type of entertainment I want to deliver. Um, but you know, there's no frills on, on my stream, uh, yet, I guess I have like three emotes. Um, and, uh, and I know like now, now I've, I've seen that even if I don't see, even if I'm not singing, um, people are still down to hang and, uh, that's, uh, that's really motivating for me. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that I would call myself a good streamer yet, but, um, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, this isn't so much of like a hobby. Like, I'm very passionate about this. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's it says something when the answer to what makes you a good streamer is, don't know yet, but what makes me a good, you know, worth watching is me. You know, okay. I think, you know, you are, you, you know, that's, I think everybody has, everybody's worth watching in their own way. It's just focusing on the right things. Um, and I think you're doing a brilliant job of it. Um, Thank you. I think it's fair to say that you're a, a tad popular with the ladies, um, especially in terms <laughs> of your music. Um, is this a happy coincidence or is that sort of a target audience um, when you're writing a song? Um, I mean, the, the, I think a, a majority of the, of the music that I've put out and kind of my, my, um, my base level 
in my wheelhouse is always going to be focused on um, the experiences in my life regarding uh, love or lack thereof. Um, and what I've done kind of on my own side of things in, in writing is tried to take experiences that might not be uh, as down the middle, like if it's like other types of relationships in my life or other, other types of professional experiences or, or things that, that um, aren't as relatable, but I still want to express myself. How can I kind of tie those into the songwriting while still making it um, something that you can listen to on the other end and like, okay, I, I got, I figured this out about me. Mm -hmm. um, and with regards to the target demo, I mean, uh, I, I think that I just feel, I just feel really lucky. Whoever listens is listening. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, um, the, the, the audience definitely is, um, I think skewed towards the, the female side. Um, but I, I think, um, it's, it's grow it's growing into a much broader, uh, much broader type of audience. And, and I really like kind of just welcoming anybody who, who wants to listen. Um, and even if you don't want to listen, if you want to come in and like hate on me for a second, I'll still say thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just, uh, it's interesting for me as somebody who listens to your music and hears what I hear, I guess it, it sometimes surprises me at how much there is, um, you know, female side of things when I think it's fair to say you're writing from a male perspective. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah. seen as you are, and also, you know, what I hear in the music sometimes, yeah, I mean, oh, that's that's really interesting. As I was saying this, uh, Victoria Reeves has said in chat, I think a lot of ladies are connected to your music because it's written from the male perspective. Um, so oh. I, I guess maybe my sexuality is coming into play there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I, some, there was somebody who wrote a note. Um, at a, I was on tour. I forget what city it was in. Somebody wrote me a note. Um, it was very kind. And part of the note said, thank you for not objectifying people. Thanks for not writing songs that were um, openly derogatory towards a specific person or, or something. It, it's my, my experience, especially on an album like Hoax and stuff before, is I'm, I'm trying to unpack things about myself when I'm writing songs on the front end. And when it comes out, uh, I can express that in, in whatever way, shape, and form, but I want you to listen to the music and, and see if, if something relates to you personally like that as well. And maybe with some of the new stuff, um, something even as simple as like certain pronouns that I, that I put in the lyrics and things uh, might kind of change things up, but I always try and, and make the, the songwriting as universal as possible. Um, and so definitely, since I am a guy singing um, to... Um, what you can surmise to be uh, in some songs a girl. Um, it is it is the opposite perspective, and, and I think Victoria is is right to say that. Mm. Um, but again, I'm just trying to make I'm trying to make something that is openly accessible as possible um, without kind of compromising the whole point of why I write music in the first place. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think I guess what I was saying that from for me listening to the music, it sort of I, I can hear things and go hey, you know, I was at that stage or I was trying to figure that out in that situation or I still haven't figured that out in that situation. I can sort of relate to it from a from your perspective, if that makes sense. But then, you know, I guess a lot of people are hearing you sing to them and that must be... It, that's a very personal and special thing too. Yeah. Um, how does streaming music compare to playing live uh, to touring? Yeah, um, I can get away with a lot more when I'm streaming. Um there's uh i mean even even just kind of me typing the next song that i want to throw in uh and um on my really clicky clacky keyboard um <laughs> we all uh, have them There's yeah. nothing wrong with that <laughs> but um i i guess um and i i think i think um people who watch my stream uh would would agree because they're if they're not on the stream they're in the crowd um in front of the stage there is obviously still something missing um, on a live stream that you can't really get anywhere other than a concert in the same room with people and everything. But I think, um, especially if you're listening on headphones, uh, there's there's real intimate moments on the stream that you can still pick up on um, in the performance. 
Um, and, and that's what I'm trying to kind of, that's what I'm trying to cultivate more on the live stream. Cause I know that I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the same performance that, that I'm capable of, uh, on a stage. Of course. Uh, but, um, if I, I mean, obviously if I had my preference, I'd, I'd be on a stage in front, in front of people, uh, seven days out of the week. But this is definitely like, um, just because of the type of performance I'm giving, which I normally wouldn't do on stage. Uh, it's, it's definitely another equally, I think as intimate look in, into, um, type of music I'm listening to type of music I'm singing and writing and, uh, and certain certain nights on stream like uh i'll definitely do stuff that i would never do on stage um with whether it's like music that hasn't come out yet or um or or covers that you wouldn't hear me sing live uh by artists that that um i just wouldn't perform live from and and it seems to resonate pretty well with with the audience so far so it's there is a nice little separation between the two yeah um a lot of music streamers do song requests um mm -hmm. Is this something that uh, is terrifying as an artist? Even if you've got a set song list? Or is it quite like, it's quite a comfort thing, you know, hey, you play that song and you just, there's the chords, there's the lyrics, right, let's go. Yeah. I think on the surface, um, the, the the quick and easy answer is I just haven't set up the thing yet. Um, but uh, one thing that I that I have paid attention to in the, on the, song this the song streamer list and and like more like heavily request have like um centric streams is um i'm so used to um being in control of the performance um especially on stage um that uh my ten my like tendency unless unless i know something that i see in the chat um and i can just throw it in impulsively um, my tendency is to go through, you know, like use, use what, use what you can use what you know, or use what you have, do what you can basically. Um, and so I, I want to try and, um, make the request, um, feature of, of, of the music stream to be, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try and come up with like, um, a different angle on, on how to, how to bring that in. And I know I owe a lot of my chat I, I, I there's a lot of requests that i have to still learn too hmm. um and so i think i might have been talking to you about it early on like doing like live learns and things yeah. and and um that's uh that's a, that's an interesting um way to sort of uh without breaking dmca or whatever an interesting way to kind of uh get from a to a to b on a song but um i mean i, I personally know. as somebody who plays music fairly badly yeah. i find the idea of a live learn terrifying because when i'm learning a song and you know, i'm sort of you know singing it along sort of you know mediocrely quietly not really thinking about it you know you're playing around with the chords oh i'm not quite sure about that i'll move that there right uh, doing that in front of somebody that's that's uh <laughs> that's scary as fuck <laughs> it's, it's i guess i guess um i don't know maybe, maybe that's the sort of like uh improv uh back in, influence and background that i have um from uh the, the the bit of jazz that I know and 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 the players that I usually play with in my band and everything like um, on stage you're always making mistakes and mm. so um, the 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 goal there is is how do you how do you make your mistakes sound intentional um, and and good yeah. uh, basically no uh, and, and I guess a lot a, a live learn from from my angle would would be like fairly daunting still but but uh just just kind of i don't know if somebody said can you learn bohemian rhapsody uh or the or the stairway to heaven solo yeah it's not nice, know, and nice and easy yeah right you know if, if it if it's something that that i know that i can like tackle um in in front of people then then i'll go for it. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna outkick my coverage mm. yeah i think i think that's fair you have to be able to you know know where you're window is um but i think i think of you as quite a you know polished performer um so to hear you then learning live is uh, but maybe you learn polishedly too <laughs> i don't know maybe it's quite so instinctive i mean do, do you find often when you listen to a track that you can play it back quite quickly um yeah i think um so i'm listening for just the fundamentals of the song right um because you're only on one instrument 
Um, and so very easily you can get lost in all the tricks that the song's production has and everything. But I'm listening specifically to um, the melody and the chord changes. I'm not even really paying attention to the words mm. um, because you can take some liberty with lyrics when you're covering something. Uh, so if I get the melody dialed in and then I pull the lyrics up, as long as I have the melody in my head, I can kind of fumble through the words and, and skate around, you know, the way the original is. And oftentimes people like hearing kind of that sort of deviation from, uh, from, from the original kind of lyrical journey anyway. So it's, um, I think I've done, I've, I've done the live learn thing once or twice on the stream and, and, uh, we got through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, streaming is obviously something that you started, as you said, because touring wasn't happening. Uh, yeah. when touring comes back, um, is streaming going to continue? I, yes. Um, I, I want to come up with a way to integrate, um, streaming into the, the touring side of things, whether it's like pre-show or post-show. Um, I don't know that, um, it would make as much sense to live stream the shows themselves mm. um, just because it would be like from the stage, you wouldn't really hear anything. Um, but I think uh, especially from like a just chatting perspective or like sound check or whatever, um, it could be kind of fun to, to bring that on um, and do like kind of like a higher scale, like tour vlog kind of thing. Um, Cause I know a lot of people are interested in, um, in that kind of content sort of behind the scenes. Um, you, you did a tour vlog on YouTube, didn't you? I think we watched it on stream, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did um, for the for the hoax tour, and um, again, that that was kind of the first that 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 um, tour vlog was when I was like, oh, maybe I should like do more of this because mm -hmm. it's not just me singing. It's like you get a little bit of my sense of humor. You get like interaction with other people in my life who I work with a lot, and um, and and just kind of that side of my brain. Um, and uh and and that's when the conversation started kind of brewing back then in 2019 for uh hopping in front of a camera more frequently yeah i mean i, th I think also it looks like you're having fun uh, yeah yeah and that's, I, I, that's I, important I'm, right yeah i'm convinced that that some listeners think i don't have fun so um <laughs> because i'm so sad all the time so I, I i want them to know that we're okay but um but yeah <laughs> i'd say you know i think it's uh in some ways fun being sad um in your totally. yeah in your mode um do you have a favorite moment of the stream so far has there been a moment where you just went, do you know what that was bloody brilliant um maybe it's getting partner congratulations by the way thank you um yeah that was uh that was that was cool um i think um those those types of checkpoints are um are are, are cool from the top down but but if i'm looking into the minutia of the streams there's always uh, a couple nights here and there where I'm really hitting like my vocal acrobatics a bit better than than others, and um, there's some uh, there's some moments in certain medleys and stuff that um, where I even kind of like surprise myself, um, and sometimes you'll hear me react while I'm singing <laughs> yep, like that. Copy and, um, and so and so those are really special. And then certain people who I play games with that. Uh, you know the the whole reason I I play video games like we've been talking about like I've been kind of talking too much about is is the outlet nature of it all and and um, there's certain people who just need to like inhale and they can make me like lose my mind and, and like laugh for, yeah. for 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 like hours um, and uh, and and those are always uh, fun moments and um, there's plenty of clips uh, that that that, uh, that can showcase some of those but definitely on the music end like. If it's a new song that I haven't covered yet, um, and and it gets everybody in the chat really excited, and then couple that with with a uh, like just an and really unnecessary vocal run, um, and and there's not really a blunder on it. That's um that that's kind of fun. Yeah, I think it's fair to say when you're really in the moment, you're kind of just playing around sometimes with the music, and I think that yeah. really produces some wonderful moments. Um. Let's talk about some personal things. Um, okay. I know you do personal because uh, I've seen you do a personality test on stream. <laughs> so uh, what's your favorite place in the whole world? It can be as simple as your chair or as complicated as a beach in, you know, Santa yeah. Fe. 
favorite place in the whole world is Pittsburgh, um, hometown. Um, and honestly, like, I love this apartment, but but just like, it doesn't have to be this apartment. I, I think just like the memories I have in in this in this city, like this is kind of my my fundamental sort of base. Um, if it's not my hometown, probably uh, I don't know Brooklyn. That's where I used to live. Yeah, home is everything else is like a destination. Place, right? Yeah, yeah. It's always where you come back to. That's important. Uh, yeah. What's your biggest fear in life? Oh. Um. I don't know. Uh. I think um. A, one one thing that 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 I uh, try not to get too worked up about is um. Like not being heard, um, because that's kind of the whole name of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, like I'm writing the music for for myself in the first place anyway. Uh, so I guess my biggest fear, I would just like um, for somebody to um, remember me in a in a good way when I'm when I'm out of here. Um, okay. Yeah. It's a good way to live. Um, you mentioned earlier that your dad is your superhero. Is it fair to say that he's also your inspiration, or would you describe that as someone else? Uh, he's definitely a big part of, of my musical inspiration, um, just based on the stuff he listened to and kind of like had me preconditioned to uh, at a young age. Um, he's a big classic rock fan, and, and nowadays he's, he's finding stuff that I've either known about or didn't really get into that... Um, he like puts me onto it, which is really cool. Usually, uh, it doesn't work like that. Your dad's kind of stuck in his in his ways and stuff. So uh, he's he's a very creative person. Um, but my my inspiration, my influences are kind of outstretched over a whole bunch of stuff. Mm. Um, you you've embraced the mental health side of things a lot on stream. Yeah. Um, what really holds Kevin Garrett back? Kevin Garrett. Elaborate. Um, well, I, I mean, I get in my own way um, uh, a lot of the time. And across the board, it's not just professionally or, or anything else. Like, I'm convinced that some decisions that I've made um, on the business side of things were for the sake of the art and not the sake of the gig. Um, and I'll die on that hill. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm still... A, I'm still a human with like ambition mm. and to um, whether it's based on the principle or, or of, of the matter or, or just not getting the look because, because you've chosen to stay independent. Like I want to, I, I want to sell out the garden at one point. Like I want, I want to play, I want to play huge shows and, and we can still get there. But like um, uh, I think creatively and, and professionally and personally and, and stuff like and I think a lot of people, especially on a personal level, can relate. Um, we have to really know and love ourselves before um, we can share ourselves. Hmm. And in this in this industry specifically, um, you're required to share yourself. Um, and so sometimes it's not that it's premature, but it's but it's sensory overload sometimes. And so you're always. Or I'm I'm always finding myself kind of uh, constantly sort of gauging my output um, and and tempering um, my ambition or my ambitious sort of expectations of myself. I'm, I'm, a, I'm very competitive, so um, that also kind of plays it into um, what holds me back uh, sometimes because it's it's a it's all it's all like a, a game of you're chasing the next thing and and sometimes the thing that's preventing you from that is a bunch of resources or a specific connection or uh, just something not hitting mm -hmm. and uh and i'm constantly reminding myself that like you're fine like yeah uh, but but the, i think i probably hold myself back the most <laughs> that's fair that's fair um what would you say really motivates you to work hard um um 
Well, I think first and foremost, uh, the audience that I've kind of uh, gained over the years um, has has really inspired me to um, continue to try and connect on a personal, creative level. Um, but I'm a songwriter first and foremost, and and um, selfishly, it's it's like music is my kind of therapy, mm. and so um, the motivation is to continue to kind of um, gain experience or, or like mature um, on, on an emotional level. Um, and that um, connected to the fact that I am very lucky to be in a position where people are eager to listen to the music that I'm putting out um, is definitely a, a nice um, motivational cocktail. Yeah, um, I can imagine. Um, you obviously spend a lot of time, especially while writing and singing to people, quite vulnerable, um, quite emotionally vulnerable. How do you close up? How do you, you know, go back to normal Kevin? Or is that normal Kevin? <laughs> um, yeah, I click stop streaming and <laughs> and uh, and then I, I, um, I put on like old episodes of New Girl. Um, no, I, I think uh, I've caught myself a few times on, on the stream and, and also it always happens on stage. There's just some songs that um, that kill me. Um, and, uh, there's certain moments in songs that can come out of nowhere and kill me. Um, and it's usually, uh, it's usually, I catch myself a bit too late. So then you kind of see, um, you kind of see what the music does to me on the front end. Uh, and I don't mind sharing that as much as I used to, because, um, I just want, I want to be honest. Like, I think that there's an importance to transparency in the creative process especially because far too often like i can listen to a song and like i don't believe a word i don't i don't i, I don't think this is authentic at all mm. and um and so i i i want to um I, I want to constantly um offer whatever threshold of of insight uh or, or a look into that side of of um my world as as, as i am capable of um but yeah, every, every once in a while, like, um, you do need to disconnect. I, I think social media in general, the internet in general, uh, having become like basically a part of my job, mm. um, is, is terrifying. Yeah, really it is. Terrifying. It is absolutely and, terrifying. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not like when I started playing the violin at, as, at four years old or when I put out coloring um, in 2014 that like I was thinking okay I need to tweet about this or I need to post a picture about this. like I was like this is a song that I made and, I, and I'm cool with people listening to it now and um, when things when, when you start to flirt with success and, and, and like growth um, for your business these other things come with it and and it's all about kind of how you adapt to i wouldn't call it adversity which is like the new things that um can kind of trip you up here and there yeah new challenges yeah okay. um yeah just on a note um you said about uh people sometimes you listen to songs and you don't believe them i think people can like your music people can hate your music but no one can say that you're not being authentic that you don't believe what you're singing um, thank you. you know, I think that's very, it comes through very strongly. Um, thank you. If there's one musician you could work with that you haven't already worked with, who would you want yeah. it to be? Um, oh. Kendrick Lamar. That's a good I was listening, I was listening to some, some Kendrick features the other day. I think Kendrick or Cole mm -hmm. would be probably top of my list right now. What a fantastic collaboration that'd be. Um, if, the, if, 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 okay, that's living. If, if it's somebody in general. Oh yeah. What does. if you, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. 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 What, what is your, uh, favorite lyric that you've written? Oh, or set of lyrics. If you prefer to go with a whole song as opposed to a specific line. I think, um, There's a lot of there's a lot of new stuff that is coming out um, that I'm very proud of lyrically. Specifically, this one project, uh, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but but it's uh, 
it's something that I did with um, a producer friend and friend of mine. Um, and uh, well, I'm, I'm you know I'm, without getting too into it, the the way that it was created um, was very much in its own sort of time capsule. And um, I'm always trying to like refine and, and improve my lyrics, um, whether it's making them more more accessible or more esoteric or more um, like even for the sake of like uh, just the music being as artistic as possible over your head. Um, but I think out of songs that have been out, um, I always kind of go back to this song, Never Knock, um, which was inspired by a few things, um, most notably a Charlie Chaplin movie. Um, and, um, the, the lyric in that song that, that I, um, will sometimes be like, oh, this is good. This is really, this is really great. Um, is in the second verse. Um, uh, basically the whole second verse. Um, and, uh, the, the one part that, that, that hits me is, um, I think too much, but I don't feel enough with a gun to my head, then I might confess uh, that it's you that I love. And there's some lyrics on either side of that line that um, kind of open up into my per my perception of myself, what I think people think of me also. Um, mm -hmm. And and then the chorus is kind of just this, um, just to the point, as blunt as you can be, like, I, I am stuck, you know, that kind of thing. But that song... I think is um if i'm if i'm gassing myself up that's that's some major league writing yeah i think so too um the the question i think a lot of people are waiting for what is next for kevin garrett musically um when can we expect some new music when can we expect to see you live um what's um, coming i mean i know that's a strange time to ask that question when can we expect yeah. to see you live because yeah, apart from monday night or you know um live in the flesh i mean um uh, yeah when COVID allows um so in terms of new music, uh, I know just um, uh, in the inner circle of, of Team KG, if you will, uh, there's there's some really exciting plans um, to get a whole bunch of stuff out this year um, uh, as soon as um, uh, early summertime. And uh, I think the next thing that, that I kind of want to um, put out is some songs that um kind of represent uh the the season a bit more uh can like lyric lyric wise they still kind of are are in my lane but i think stylistically uh it might make you like um bop your head a bit more and uh and and kind of um i'm always trying to sort of challenge pop music um even though a lot of my stuff is more alternative and i think this stuff will be um, kind of as close to that sort of world as I've gotten. And then, you know, without getting too far into it, there's other projects, excuse me, that are like right back into classic, uh, Kevin mode. And like, there's some acoustic stuff. There's some really sort of cinematic moments. And, um, that project that I was mentioning, I'm really excited about with Zay is, uh, is, um, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but I'm really looking forward to that. And then live music, um, there's a chance in the fall that I might be on a stage again. Uh, but um, I don't think really anything's happening until 2022. Yeah, I think that's probably where most people are at. Um, certainly yeah. in England, you know, you, there's no sign of it any, even on the horizon. Yeah. Um, you guys are doing well with the vaccine, though, I, I think. Oh, we... Um, it depends on which county you're in, unfortunately. I live oh, okay. in a county full of old people, so I'm, like, sort of months down the queue. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's sort of... It is, it's going out, it's going. A um, couple of quick, sort of lighter questions. Uh, what really pisses you off? What really just makes you off? Do you know what? I get oh, a bit angry. Um, it's your chance to unleash. Yeah, I think... Um... I, I'm, I would sound hypocritical for saying this because I'm constantly working on not doing it myself, but um, just like um, communication, uh, not not so much like 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 the the menial things in life, but like uh, the, the more hard hitting stuff. Like if you're 
if you're confronting something like con confront it um and as i'm as i'm saying that like i know for a fact that like i've left so many people hanging on things so um it's 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 wrong for me to get pissed off when someone does it to me but but just i'm always trying to be better a better communicator um other little things that piss me off and uh again i'm hypocritical for saying this because i did it the other day in discord <laughs> Uh, the your your thing, Y O U apostrophe R E versus Y O U R. I hate that. Um, I don't like when strangers call me buddy. Um, it's a that that's just a real bummer. I um, really agree with that one. That is uh, yes. Yeah, and um, also it doesn't save you any any time to type Y A instead of Y O U. <laughs> that one really bums me out. I, I probably won't respond and then kind of do. The opposite of what i'm trying to do in the first part of that answer um if you say yeah to me yeah. and you're saying you chat called that before you uh <laughs> before oh, really? you brought it up yeah uh, apparently acacia gang knows uh knows the answer to these questions oh yeah you know <laughs> um, better than i know myself and what makes you smile um uh, I, if, if i can make somebody laugh that makes me happy um if uh there's there's certain there's certain people that 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 can break my heart and still make me really happy um uh and and that's like a very short list of of, of individuals um when i can whatever if it's a tv show or if it's going for a walk or, or if it's something that can take me out of my mind um even for a split second um i hold on to those things um kind of unhealthily um and then just listening to the bit of music that I will never not love, I think, uh, kind of puts me back in a good headspace. Yeah, that's good. Um, that brings us to uh, nearly the end um, okay. of the interview. I was going to ask you about uh, the meaning behind hoax, but uh, you are going to play us a song shortly. Yeah. Um, and if it's all right, I'll ask you just to talk about the meaning behind that particular song. Sure. Um, but before we do, first of all, um, du during the song and... Uh, for now, if chat have any questions that they'd like to ask Kevin, um, please just pop them in the chat and I'll pull them out as and when. Uh, but I'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk about why I like your stream. Um, this Thank is you. one of my favourite bits of the interview. Uh, I love to I love getting to people to tell people you know face to face why I really enjoy the content. Now I you know I sort of bumped into your channel. I think it was the day you got affiliated. Um, you were raided by Anna Carmela, um, and yeah. I came along, and there was this. I mean, I'm going to call it raw content. That's that's the word for it. And you weren't particularly with it with Twitch. Um, nope. You know, I, I don't know. I think it's fair to say you're a little bit impulsive and not really the most planning of per people, um, yep. which I think comes out wonderfully in stream because we can go in one direction and just whoop, off we go in another one. Um, but I think we talked about it earlier, the authenticity, the honesty, the genuineness. Um, it, it's raw, you know. If you're emotional, we see it. If you're pissed off with someone we see it you know if you're really pleased with something you've just done we see it and i think that shows when you're chatting when you're playing video games when you're singing um i mean obviously as well there's you know it's a lovely side effect when you actually really enjoy the music someone's playing um you know i have a lot of artists that i watch on twitch and i enjoy all their covers and then as soon as they play an original i'm like do you know what i'm all right um but for me you know clearly you are a songwriter and an artist. Um, I don't think there's any separation there. And I think that uh, that shows when you do covers as well. You know, you don't hear... It doesn't matter how many covers you play. You never hear one that you go, oh, who's singing this? You know, it's it's always Kevin I involved in the music. You know, you make it your own within the first 10 seconds. It's, you know, you've got your style and you know it and you understand it and you understand yourself as a musician. And I think that's really a pleasure to watch you almost play. Um, you Thank know, you. I think... Uh, also, you're incredibly interactive with your chat. Um, sometimes, you know, chat's Thanks. flying by and people are throwing things left, right and centre and, you know, you'll still pick out all the things in a matter and you genuinely seem appreciative of every single person that's come. And I think a lot of a lot of streamers, whether they've got 3,000 viewers or three, um, they can be interactive with their chat, but the appreciation doesn't always show. Um, and I think that's something that you do brilliantly. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to more, Kevin. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, was um, really, that was really nice. Thanks. Good. Uh, so you're going to play us a song. Uh, what what song are you going to play us? Uh, 
oh, I'm going to sing um, the first single that was off of Hoax is called In Case I Don't Feel. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about what it means. The, uh, the byline is, um, is really, uh, in, in the, in the chorus of it all is, um, just try to hurt me once in case I don't feel it. So it's kind of a commentary on like presence within, um, something, whether it's a romantic relationship or, or otherwise. Um, and it's geared in, in this sense towards, um, me singing, uh, to someone who, just uh wasn't really in it um and uh i was kind of asking myself the question um was i also not really in it or was or or was i too in it and um for the sake of me figuring that out could the other person uh just kind of like tap on my window once just to see if i can like hear them um because uh I think we all do this sometimes um i certainly do um put a little too much into something um with not really getting much back um and the whole kind of um conversation around hoax um was really um kind of self-reflective and um kind of trying to dig into things about me as a person while I'm writing the songs um, that are either being projected onto other people or um, I'm not quite capable of articulating to myself, let alone anyone else. So just trying to like kind of um, unpack some of those, those things in the music um, while still trying to communicate something specific. Wow. Take it away. Okay. Uh, Oh. Yeah, turn this one off. Uh, yep, yeah, and just check check the sensitivity on the Discord as well. I know sometimes when people perform through the Discord, it can yeah. cut you off. So uh, we'll have you open mic and me very muted, um, okay, just in case good. I uh, end up singing along. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. This is not a duet. <laughs> I think this is good. My 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 square is green. Yeah. Took the air out my chest Is any wonder I'm still breathing? Breathing Every night Tell you I'm still alright Just trying to make you believe it Believe me Your love hurt, chauffeured and unrehearsed. Don't act like you don't own it. You don't own it. The way we worked, covered in fragile words. Just waiting for the other to crack open. Hoping. And when I go, and when I go, and when I go, well, you'll hardly know it if you ever change your mind. Don't tell me what you want in case you don't mean it. Leave me behind Just try to hurt me once In case I don't feel it In case I don't feel In case I don't Case I don't Case I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Easy to say 
that I've not been the same since I gave up on praying, praying, praying. But in my head, it's not so hard to catch exactly what I'm saying. You're controlling me now If you ever change your mind Don't tell me what you want in case If you ever change your mind you want in case you don't mean it leave me behind just try to hurt me once in case i don't feel it in case i don't feel in case i don't case i don't case i don't feel wow um, I'm really genuinely privileged in this uh, interview scenario that we do that we do this uh, playing artist playing a song to us. There's something incredible about being on a one-to-one -one call. I mean, obviously, I you know you're singing to an audience of uh, whatever whoever the viewers are, but to me, it just feels like you know a one-to-one -one performance. And after an hour and forty minutes of just chatting away, to then just go ah oh, yeah yeah fine, not even a sip of water, and then sing like that, it's. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really is uh, something wonderful to be part of. Um, I'm just a heads up to chat. I am not going to be able to fit in all these questions, um, <laughs> but I'll pick a few. Okay. Um, Amanda one zero seven nine says, "Have you mentored any up me uh, mentored any up and coming artists? Um, what advice do you give them about the industry if you do?" Um, I don't know if it was like consistent over the course of a period of time, but uh, there are some. Uh, are some other uh, friends who um, I've either brought on tour with me or are just kind of, um, I guess, fans of of, of me, and uh, um, I've 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 always been open to whatever I'm capable of of offering in terms of advice, um, doing the best I can to to kind of um, put them in whatever direction they're they're interested in uh, because. My whole career is, is built off of being an opener and, and learning from artists that I've admired over the years. And in a truly professional uh, musician way, you've segued perfectly into the next question. Oh. Um, Diamond Loki says, what is the great piece of greatest piece of advice you've received from an artist or musician that you admire? Mm. Um, I think... Uh, I, I think it's it's all kind of the the general sentiment of of what we were talking about earlier that kind of I struggle with is is just not holding back um, and kind of and kind of just going for it um, as long as 
as long as I'm proud of what I'm making, the streaming numbers and the and the ticket sales and everything um, pale in comparison to the quality of the of the content that you're offering and the quality of art that you're offering people to consume. Um, and so, uh, really, like I guess, kind of just the whole sort of no fear thing, probably something that a few friends that I really look up to have, have told me. Yeah, I think it's an important message. Um, Aspect FV says, uh, Kevin, how and when did you start this path as a songwriter? Oh, yeah. Um, I was around music my whole life. I uh, started playing at a really young age, violin, and, and um, from there kind of got my ears really in a zone to try and pick other things up. Um, didn't really start writing songs until I was about 12 or 13. And from that point until... I had lived in New York for five years out of after um, just graduating from college. Like I was writing songs and playing shows and stuff, but I didn't know how the music business worked. Um, and I didn't really know the world of writing songs for other people because I've only ever written my own songs. Um, the very, I, I did a couple things for some friends who were, were all kind of in the same circle at the time years ago, but the first thing that really put me into the space was um, uh, the Beyonce cut. Um, and that's uh, that's something that definitely opened a lot of doors for me on the songwriting end uh, and the production end. Um, right place, right time. There's really no. Yeah. It's, it's a very fluky experience. Yeah. So you know, if you're in the right place enough times, uh, it'll yeah. happen at the right time. Right. Um, Beth Vance says, "Do you mind fans singing along during concerts, or do you prefer it when they're silent?" Um. I, I don't mind singing along at all. I think um, I've gotten a bit more comfortable um, if if uh, if I want it to be more of like a um, me to you type thing, saying like, um, kind of stay with me here. But um, the thing that I think any performer would, would say that they have a problem with is, is just people talking when, when oh, the yeah. performance is going on. Yeah. That's, uh, that's awful. But yeah, I mean, I, I suppose as well, it depends on what you're singing. You know, if there's a really yeah. quiet, intimate moment where you're, you know, riffing and you're clearly lost in it, then singing along is quite strange. But if you're singing the chorus line of, you know, one of your most popular, you expect people to, you know. Honestly, if if somebody can keep up with with some of the stuff that my, that I'm doing on the stage, though, then please <laughs> sing <come> away. Along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take the mic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Pocket Cabbage says, not really a question, um, but I'd love to hear some violin on an upcoming track. Is that something we might hear at some point? Some strings? I think we can we can bring it in. My violin's actually on the other side of my monitors because uh, I I uh, took it out the other day and, and dusted it off. Um, oh good. But I gotta get I, I gotta take it to a I gotta get it serviced. Um, but uh, the um, the guy who who did a lot of my string work on Hoax, his name's Rob Moose. Um, as as many years as I put into the violin, uh, it's it's such a hard instrument to to just come back to after pretty much a decade away from it yeah. um so uh i still have a little bit of the muscle memory but um once i get my tone back and and uh and i get a new piece of rosin from my bow yeah i'll probably try and put it back into some demos that sounds good <laughs> um beth fitzmorris says do you have a favorite instrument um I'm, ass I'm assuming for the listening sense um i'm assuming in the playing sense the guitar sort of just is an instant response yeah, um, especially since I started streaming, the guitar is just the easiest thing to kind of pick up and, and go at it. Um, but I think my favorite instrument over, like, across the board, just because it's all right in front of you and um, you can do things that you can't... For me, uh, I, I can I can provoke feeling out of, out of a piano, um, specifically a, a felt-pedaled uh, um, piano, um, like an upright Yamaha or something. Um, and I, I can get lost immediately. Yeah, I think uh, that's true for me as well. Um, that brings us to a final question. Now, this was asked quite a, quite early on, but I think it's a question that really uh, is worth asking. Um, okay. What would little Kevin say to big Kevin? Is he proud? Oh. Um, I would say uh, he probably wouldn't care. Um, but, uh, but if, if, if little Kevin, um, was a, uh, 
was a chill dude. Um, I I think I I think so far he'd be pretty proud, but he'd probably be like get your shit together and keep moving. Um, uh, so uh, I I hope that um, an even older uh, I hope that I'm proud of an even older version of me. Uh, but I, I I think I'm doing okay so far. That's fair. And what about Big Kevin? What does he say to little Kevin? You went back and spoke to your ten-year-old self. Oh. Huh. What do you tell him? Um. Well. I think uh, if I could in, if I could have instilled um, just the ability to not think so hard um, from an early age. Um, and and not not worry so much about um everybody else uh then um i I probably i'd probably be marginally um happier but at the same time i'm where i am now because of where i came from so uh i just you know it is i i think it is what it is is a kind of um fun fun way to talk about that yeah i think that's very real um, thank you so much for coming along today. Um, I know you're a busy person. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, I know I oh, certainly have. Um, I, thanks for having me. Just briefly, would you uh, give a happy birthday to Becky Smalls12? Uh, oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Becky. Nashville Becky, happy birthday. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. When are you, when are you streaming next? Uh, when can we expect to see you? Are you on a short I hiatus, think, um, I believe you said? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take a, a short, a short break, um, but uh, I, there's just some, some, some stuff I gotta, I gotta sort out. Um, but I, I ended, I ended uh, on a pretty long stream, so there's a, there's a really nice long vod to watch in the meantime, um, <laughs> and uh, plenty, of, plenty of other content if, if you just scroll down. But, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back, I'll be back sooner or later. Thanks, thanks for your patience, by the way. I know we, we were chatting about getting this sorted, and I appreciate it. That's all right. It's sort of a, it actually worked perfectly in terms of time, so I really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Um, and, uh, okay, I was about to uh, thank some other people, but thank you for the gift subs. I really oh, appreciate it. That. <laughs> that's, uh, that's lovely. Right. I'm going to do a couple of streamy things um, to say thank you, but uh, from me and from the chat, thank you so much for coming, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. My pleasure. Uh, take care. I'll see you real soon.